Hello everybody and welcome back to another MCAT question of the day here at MCAT Self Prep. Today we're going to be working through one of the many practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, home of the free e-course. And today our question comes from the lesson about DNA from the Biochemistry 1 module. My name is Theo Bennett. I'm one of the tutors here at MCAT Self Prep and I actually used our free e-course to get a perfect 528 on the MCAT exam. So today I'm going to be walking you through one of these questions as though you were one of my private tutoring students. So let's go ahead and jump in, but before we do, feel free to pause and try this question out for yourself. So to answer this question correctly, we need to understand the different enzymes involved in DNA replication. DNA replication is a very complicated topic that I can't condense into just a few short minutes, but essentially we're starting with a double strand piece of DNA and we're creating two double strands of DNA. This happens because there's complementary base pairs on these two different strands of DNA that happen in our original strand. Those get split in half and then they get recopied where they match with the corresponding uh, complementary base pair. So we can see the green is then getting rematched with yellow complement and this yellow is getting rematched with the green. This happens in such a way where one of the sides has to have a bunch of these fragments called Okazaki fragments, and the other one can just proceed uninterrupted, um, which is pretty nice. Okay, so to have this process happen uh, with fidelity, basically what we have to do is first unwind this very windy piece of DNA, and that happens with topoisomerase. Then we have to split it in half using this kind of wedge-like enzyme, and that's called helicase. Then we have to, for the kind of more complicated side, we have to add a bunch of primers um, using primase. And then these RNA primers allow DNA polymerase to come in and attach these complementary uh, nucleotides in the correct sequence. Um, and then ultimately those primers have to get removed um, and then resealed together with DNA ligase. So pretty complicated, but basically we have to have an enzyme provide primers so that that way our synthesizer can attach and then at the end we seal all these little fragments up with uh, a ligation enzyme. On this leading strand, it's a lot easier. DNA is synthesized from a five prime to three prime end and this, um, so we don't have to work backwards. And so basically the polymerase can just go uninterrupted and it's, it's pretty easy, that's all you need. Okay, so now that we understand that, let's talk about DNA repair. Uh, because again, there's an error introduced here. So there's a couple ways that DNA can be repaired. For the MCAT, you don't need to know all the details, uh, but the most common and most highly tested, I would say, for the MCAT is this mismatch repair, uh, where this can happen through a bunch of toxins or UV damage. Um, basically, DNA gets damaged, um, but just in one little um, mismatch right here. Um, so we have Enzymes come in and just repair that single base pair. You don't need to know all their names. Um, it's, it's not too complicated. But then sometimes we have DNA strands that actually break. So um, here we've got a cut here, right? And a cut here through two different DNA strands. Again, you don't need to know all the details for this and I certainly can't talk about it in a few minutes, um, but it, there are two different mechanisms for repairing these breaks. One is non-homologous end joining, where basically you get proteins that just come in and smash these two um, pieces together uh, and you end up losing some DNA information. And the other pathway is if you have um, basically a second strand that you can use as a template through this fancy process, you can actually repair it so that that way you don't have to smash anything together and then you don't actually lose any of that information. It's pretty great. And this is actually um, part of the, um, this is actually part of the pathway that they've used to um, use the CRISPR technology, which is pretty cool. And for this last slide, again, lots of information, but you don't really need to know a lot of this. Um, and a lot of it we've actually already gone over, but we have two different types of cells, right? We have prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells, and those are gonna be slightly different. Um, honestly, you don't need to memorize hardly any of this, but you just need to understand that for prokaryotic uh, cells, they're gonna have three different polymerase enzymes, whereas eukaryotic cells basically only have one. And so we said that the polymerase is responsible for properly matching up the nucleotides together. And so we said that the polymerase enzyme is responsible for matching these uh, nucleotides up together, but sometimes it makes mistakes. 
So polymerase 1 and polymerase 3 can actually go back and correct in prokaryotes. And in eukaryotes, it's just we only have one real polymerase. Um, and so that DNA polymerase will go back and correct it. So here we're dealing with a fish, right? And so fish are eukaryotes. We see that there's this error here, and we need to figure out what caused this error. So since it's just one base pair um, that is not matching up, uh, we know that, that the enzyme that's responsible for matching up those base pairs is going to be DNA polymerase. Because again, um, DNA ligase fixes and, and kind of congeals the different fragments on that lagging strand. DNA primase adds those RNA primers so that on the lagging strand it can um, bind and start in the reverse direction. And then helicase um, is going to be involved in, in the winding um, or unwinding of DNA. DNA helicase is going to be involved in splitting up the two different DNA strands. All right, awesome. Well, I hope this was helpful and kind of explained a couple of those foundational background uh, concepts for DNA repair and translation. Uh, feel free to give this a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you loved it, feel free to subscribe because we're going to be releasing a lot of these videos in an effort to just give you as much free content to help you on your MCAT journey as possible. So thanks again. I'm Theo and uh, see you next time.